in question number 21 a cylinder is pure rolling up an inclined plane it is stopped momentarily and then rolls back the force of friction is now we have to check the validity of these statements so if i analyze the situation suppose this is an inclined plane and it makes an angle theta with the horizontal so at t equal to 0 the cylinder is rolling up suppose it is moving in this direction with some speed v and its angular velocity at this moment is omega so if i draw the free body diagram at this point then if m is the mass of the cylinder mg sin theta is acting in this direction mg cos theta is acting in this direction normal will act in this direction and the static friction is acting in this direction as it is the case of pure rolling so if i see at this moment the direction of friction is upward so at the moment when it's momentarily stop if this is the situation if i draw the free body diagram at this point then mg sin theta is acting in this direction mg cos theta is acting in this direction normal is acting in this direction so momentarily at this point the net velocity of this point is zero and thereafter due to mg sin theta it starts getting velocity in this direction so in order to make a perfect rolling the static friction still acts in upward direction so due to this it also gain angular velocity in this direction and it makes a perfect rolling in this direction so if i analyze the option the force of friction on the cylinder is zero throughout the journey so option one is wrong in option two is directed opposite to the velocity of center of mass throughout the journey so velocity of center of mass when it is up the incline is in this direction and friction is also acting in this direction so as to reduce the angular velocity third option is is directed up the plane throughout the journey so option three is correct is directed down the plane throughout the journey so option three is correct and four is wrong so the correct answer for question number 21 is option three let's move question number 22 in question number 22 a uniform thin bar of mass 6m and length 2l is bent to make a regular hexagon its moment of inertia about an axis passing through center of mass and perpendicular to the plane of hexagon is so if i draw a hexagon so this is let hexagon and if i consider this rod the mass of this rod is m and the length is l by 3 so it is the point about which moment of inertia is to be calculated so if i consider this equilateral triangle then the length of this side is also l by 3 so if i calculate this perpendicular separation if i say this is p then p is equal to l by 3 into sine 60 degree this angle is 60 degree so root 3 by 2 so it comes out to be l by 2 root 3 so if i write the moment of inertia of the complete system about an axis which is passing through this point and perpendicular to the plane if i write moment of inertia of this rod about this point then it can be written as m into l square so l by 3 whole square by 12 so this is the moment of inertia about this point so by applying parallel axis theorem it comes out to be m into d square that is l upon 2 root 3 whole square so this is the moment of inertia of each rod about this point so if i calculate the total moment of inertia that should be multiplied by 6 so on solving it comes out to be 5 by 9 ml square so option 1 is the correct answer so the correct answer for question number 22 is option 1 let's move to question number 23 in question number 23 a uniform hollow sphere of mass m and radius r is rolling without slipping on a horizontal surface with velocity v naught as shown in figure find the kinetic energy of the lower half of the sphere so we have to calculate the kinetic energy of this lower part so in order to calculate the kinetic energy of this lower part if i consider this point as the instantaneous axis of rotation because the net velocity of this point is zero then about this point i can write kinetic energy is equal to half into i about this point into omega square so let's check what is i about this point so if i consider a lower half of the hollow sphere then it would be hollow hemisphere and the center of mass of the hollow hemisphere lies at this position and it is at a distance of r by 2 from the above as well as from the bottommost point so if i calculate the moment of inertia of the complete hollow sphere about this point then it would be written as 
टू बाय थ्री एम इन टू आर स्क्वायर और आई कैन से दैट द मोमेंट ऑफ इनर्शिया ऑफ दिस हॉलो हेमिसफियर अबाउट दिस पॉइंट इज सेम वेयर मास इज एम बाय टू सो अबाउट दिस पॉइंट द मोमेंट ऑफ इनर्शिया कैन बी रिटर्न एज टू बाय थ्री इंटू एम बाय टू इंटू आर स्क्वायर सो इट कैन बी रिटर्न एज एम आर स्क्वायर बाय थ्री इफ दिस पोजिशन इज द पोजिशन ऑफ सेंटर ऑफ मास सो आई कैन से दैट द मोमेंट ऑफ इनर्शिया ऑफ दिस हॉलो हेमिसफियर अबाउट दिस पॉइंट ए इज ऑल्सो इक्वल टू एम आर स्क्वायर बाय थ्री सिंस इट इज अ रिजिड बॉडी द एंगुलर वेलोसिटी ऑफ दिस हॉलो हेमिसफियर अबाउट दिस पॉइंट रिमेन्स ओमेगा सो इट कैन बी रिटर्न एज हाफ इन टू आई दैट इज एम आर स्क्वायर बाय थ्री इन टू ओमेगा सिंस द हॉलो स्फियर इज इन द स्टेट ऑफ प्योर रोलिंग सो आई कैन राइट वी नॉट इज इक्वल टू ओमेगा इन टू आर सो ओमेगा कैन बी रिटर्न एज वी नॉट बाय आर होल स्क्वायर सो इफ आई सोल्व दिस इट कम्स आउट टू बी एम वी नॉट स्क्वायर बाय सिक्स सो ऑप्शन थ्री इज द करेक्ट आंसर so the correct answer for question number 23 is option 3 let's move to question number 24 in question number 24 in the given arrangement the uniform solid cylinder of mass m and radius r rolls without slipping the pulley is ideal and the string does not slip over cylinder find the acceleration of the block so let the acceleration of block is a then the net velocity of this point is zero so i can consider this as my instantaneous axis of rotation so i have to apply the equation of torque is equal to i alpha about my instantaneous axis of rotation so if i draw the free body diagram let friction is acting in this direction normal is acting in this direction mg is acting in this direction so if i shift the external force acting on this block at this point considering the length of the string to be zero then m by 2 into g is force is acting in this direction and the acceleration of this point in this direction is a so the torque of friction normal and gravitational force mg about this point is zero so the only torque is written of this force so i can write m by 2 into g that is force into 2r that is the torque is equal to i about this point of this complete system so the moment of inertia of the solid cylinder about this point is 3 by 2 m r square plus moment of inertia of the block can be written as m by 2 into 2 r whole square into angular acceleration alpha which can be written as a by 2 r because the acceleration of this point is a and this separation is 2 r so on solving the value of a comes out to be 4 g by 7 so option 3 is the correct answer so the correct answer for question number 24 is option Let's move to question number twenty-five. In question number twenty-five, two identical uniform solid cylinders, each of mass m and radius r, are released from the position shown in figure. The string does not slip over the cylinders. Find the tension in the string. So when the system is set free under gravity, if I draw the free body diagram, m g is acting in this direction, tension is acting in this direction, and tension t is acting in this direction. Let the center of mass of this solid cylinder is moving in this direction with acceleration a and it is rotating with angular acceleration alpha let the angular acceleration of this solid cylinder is beta in this sense so if i apply the equation of translational motion and rotational motion corresponding to their motion for lower cylinder i can write mg minus t is equal to mass into acceleration that is my first equation so if i write torque equal to i alpha about center of mass since center of mass is accelerating so if i apply the pseudo force about center of mass then the torque of the pseudo force about center of mass is zero so i can write t into r is equal to m r square by 2 into alpha this is my equation 2 similarly if i write the rotational equation on the upper cylinder then i can write t into r is equal to m r square by 2 into beta so i can say that alpha is equal to beta so if i write the constraint relationship then beta into r plus alpha into r is equal to a this is my constraint relationship and alpha is equal to beta so i can say that 
टू अल्फा आर इज इक्वल टू ए और द वैल्यू ऑफ अल्फा इज इक्वल टू ए बाय टू आर सो इफ आई सब्सिट्यूट द वैल्यू ऑफ अल्फा हेयर इट कम्स आउट टू बी टी इज इक्वल टू एम इन टू ए बाय फोर और एम ए इज इक्वल टू फोर्टी सो इफ आई सब्सिट्यूट दिस वैल्यू इन इक्वेशन वन देन एम जी माइनस टी इज इक्वल टू फोर्टी और टी इज इक्वल टू एम जी बाय फाइव सो ऑप्शन टू इज द करेक्ट आंसर सो द करेक्ट आंसर फॉर क्वेश्चन नंबर ट्वेंटी फाइव इज ऑप्शन टू लेट्स मूव टू क्वेश्चन नंबर ट्वेंटी सिक्स 